Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with a little more in the World Watercolor Month, except today we're going to be coloring water. And I'm going to be doing a submarine card with the Sublime, Your Sublime stamp set from Lawn Fawn that has lots of cool underwater things. But it's got this little fish. I love this little fish with the light hanging in front of him, as well as the, uh, the submarine that goes with them. And I'm going to make the two of them be in love. And what I decided to do was stamp them onto a piece of Nina cardstock and cut out masks for the two shapes because they're really easy to cut out, real simple ones. Got out my craft assistant, which is that metal sheet. It's a 12 by 12 metal sheet, easy to clean up. And then my Copic airbrush. You pop a marker in, press that button, have it hooked up to either a can of air or to a, a, an air compressor. And then it pushes the color out from across the chisel nib of the marker. So I'm gonna do a couple of different yellows here around the light. And then I realized I hadn't masked off the top yet because I wanted to make this water really dark and solid. So I'm gonna use my B99 and I go with light, light layers. It's easier for me to kind of do some adjusting. I'm no expert at, at Copic Airbrush at all. It might be behoove someone to do a heavier layer and just go for it rather than do little layers little at a time but I just do a little bit of a time at a time and then try to fill in some of those lighter spots as I go and see if I can get it relatively even it doesn't end up perfect but it can be really really nicely done with Copic airbrush and it's certainly going to be a lot more even than if I were trying to use marker strokes and a lot faster so even though this is sped up. It was actually a really quick process to do that. I peeked at my little fish and decided I wanted more color there so added more and then I took off the mask so I could do the sky above and I'm just using a light blue to add a little bit of color up there. I'm going to add a water line at the top but wanted to add a little bit in the sky while I had the airbrush and compressor and everything out. The compressor actually sits underneath my desk and I leave my little air gun hooked up to it, but I don't tend to use it all that often. I really need to do more with it because it is a lot of fun and makes a lot of coloring really quick and easy. And when I do so much of my complex coloring, it would probably behoove me to spend a little more time with my Copic airbrush. And of course the big reveal is always fun. Pull off that mask and then clean up some of the edges around it because most of the time my mask cutting is not perfect. I'll either use, if I'm using a solid color like this B99, I'll use that one or I might need to switch to a lighter shade if I've stopped and just done a very light color. So be careful in what color you choose because the airbrush marker is going to be lighter color than the full marker itself. So I'm adding a little bit of a waterline at the top and if you have taken or are going to take the Copic underwater mini course, then you'll learn a little bit about how to make a water line at the top. There's a link in the description down below if you're interested in learning how to color water. And then I'm going to color my fish and my submarine. And I color them after I finish the airbrush background because if I screw up the airbrush background, I might not want to spend all the time on the coloring of the fish and the submarine. Yes, I do screw things up all the time and need to start over, so it, it's a little safer for me. I can trust myself on my coloring of an image much better than I can with my airbrushing because I'm not all that fantastic at it, uh, again, because I don't use it very often. So who knows? Maybe that will change because it's so much fun. So this little fish, I just remember these fish from the Nemo movie. They had their little light hanging in front of them. Now, they were mean fish. So mine is a little happy fish because he's in love with the submarine. He's trying to light up his world, which is just so cute. Uh, submarine, I decided to go for some bright colors and use a red and a, a light blue on the submarine itself. But I wanted to have the lighting kind of pointing away from the little fishy's light. I did the same thing with the fishy. The shadows are on the far side of the fishy and that sort of thing. So when you're working with a light source that's in the center of an image, make sure your shadows go out either direction on the left and right side away from the light itself. So do my, 
my final blending, get that nice and smooth, and then hop in to start working on the blue. And I'm using this a similar blue to the one that's in the sky, but I did have to switch to a lighter color if I wanted it to match the sky because the sky marker is lighter when it's airbrushed, as I said, than it is when it's full strength marker. So I wanted them to match a little bit, add a little bit of kind of glass type of look to the windows themselves and soften that out with the lighter marker. And then I went in with a white pen, which is the saving grace of all colorists in my mind, to try to make things look shiny, just make a really solid line that's sort of facing the light. And I'm even putting a little tiny bit on the propeller in the back. I considered putting bubbles back there, but I love the simplicity of this image so much that I kind of left it the same. Then there's little fishy finishing off his highlights. And when you get to the end of that white stroke, you can also move it with your finger while it's wet because it's kind of an acrylic paint sort of a thing. And for the finished card, all I had to do was add it onto a plain white card base because when you put a lot of time into the coloring, no need to do anything crazy with embellishing. And it makes your cards a lot cheaper to make because all you're using is markers and cardstock. And here's an example of using the submarine in a different setting. It's one of the ones that you'll learn if you take the underwater Copic class, which there is a link in the doobly-doo down below, as well as the supplies for this card, which are of course limited. And I will see you guys next time for more World Watercolor Month over on my social media, if you wanna see some watercolor and here in a couple of days. Thanks so much, take care.